not aluminum because aluminum doesn't rust. So it's not a melted airplane. What does the gentleman in charge of the cleanup at World Trade Center Ground Zero have to say about the molten metal? Mark Loiseau, the president of Controlled Demolition Incorporated, told the American Free Press that in the basements of the World Trade Center, where 47 central support columns connected to the bedrock, hot spots of literally molten steel were discovered more than a month after September 11th. These incredibly hot areas were found at the bottoms of the elevator shafts, down seven basement levels. The molten steel was found three, four, and five weeks later when the rubble was being removed. He said that molten steel was also found at World Trade Center 7. The highest temperature was in the east corner of the South Tower, where a temperature of 1,377 degrees Fahrenheit was recorded. The molten steel in the basement was more than double that temperature. What are we talking about here? Here is Building 7 at A and B, and here is the North Tower and the South Tower. These hot spots are 1,340 to 1,370 degrees. These are the temperatures of the hottest office fires. There was no fire on the surface of ground zero after the collapses. What are we measuring here? We're measuring the molten metal that was seen by these first responders four, five, six stories down below in the basements that was surely at least twice or three times these temperatures. What's the problem with that? Office fires, Eager says uh, 1,200 degrees. Uh, NIST claims 1,800 degrees, for which we have no evidence for office fires uh, of that temperature in the Trade Center towers. Well, when something's salmon or lemon colored, it's 15 or 1,800 degrees. And structural steel doesn't even begin to melt until 2,700 or so degrees. We're missing 1,000 to 2,000 degrees of temperature, heat energy required to produce this stuff. Where is it coming from? We'll be taking a look at a possible suspect, thermite, which reaches temperatures of 4,500 degrees. Molten metal flowing off the substance held in the jaws of this backhoe. Now, let's listen to John Gross, lead engineer of NIST, tell us about the molten metal from his perspective. I'm curious about uh, the, uh, the pool of molten steel that was found in the bottom of the, of the tower. Um, I, I am too. And <laughs> please tell me about it. Have you, have you seen it? Well, I, no, not personally, but my witnesses there found huge poles of molten steel beneath the towers. And uh, scientists, some scientists don't think that the uh, collapse of the building could have mel melted all that steel. And uh, uh, professor, physics professor analyzed some of the steel, and uh, Stephen Jones, and he found evidence of, uh, of thermate residue, mm -hmm. which would explain how the buildings collapsed by means of pre-planted explosives. So, have you analyzed the, uh, the steel for uh, any of those residues? Um, first of all, let's go back to your basic uh, premise that there was uh, a pool of molten, molten steel. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, and no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, yeah, molten down. steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. Lava. Like, like lava, lava from a volcano. Out, still on the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, 1,100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into... Um, what we thought was a core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know, it was just roaring inside. And it just was a bright, bright reddish orange color. Underground, it was still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of a wall from Building 6. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, and no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. What is the problem here? And we, <laughs> we have plenty of eyewitnesses who have produced it. Somebody's lying. I'm going to leave it up to you to make your own conclusions. The last fire was not even extinguished for three months after 
Tom Manley says you couldn't even begin to imagine how much water was pumped in there. It was like you were creating a giant lake. Well, thermite contains its own source of oxygen. It burns just as well under water. How about chemical evidence, though? Where, where, what's, what produced all this molten metal? And what is thermite anyway? Thermite. An incendiary used by the military, thermite is a compound of iron oxide and aluminum, which when ignited, sustains an extreme heat reaction, creating molten iron. In just two seconds, thermite can reach temperatures over 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit, quite enough to liquefy steel. We know that open air fires cannot burn hot enough to melt steel, but metal had melted at the base of the towers. Appendix C of the FEMA report describes sulfur residues on the World Trade Center steel. The New York Times called this the deepest mystery of all. Sulfur slightly lowers the melting point of iron, and iron oxide and iron sulfide had formed on the surface of the structural steel. Sulfur used with thermite is called thermate, producing even faster results. An FPA 921 is the guide for fire and explosion investigations. Was it used? They say unusual residues could arise from thermite, magnesium, or other pyrotechnic materials. In a crime scene, which this was an example of, did NIST use the guide? No. They acknowledged they didn't even look for such evidence. But others did. Dr. Stephen Jones performed chemical analysis on the previously molten metal. He does some background research, again part of the scientific method. Thermite would create a characteristic burn pattern with a white ash, a white-yellow hot liquid metal, an intense white reaction zone scene. It would also leave behind chemical evidence. Common elements such as iron, aluminum, copper, calcium, silicon. Unusual elements such as fluorine and manganese left behind also in the residue. These elements here. He sent a sample from this 40-pound chunk of previously molten metal from one of those meteorites, he finds that it's predominantly iron, so we can rule out aluminum from the jet plane. It has small amounts of aluminum, sulfur, and potassium, and manganese and fluorine in abundance. Manganese is from the potassium permanganate, commonly used as an oxidizer in thermite. Fluorine is also used in sol gel type thermite charges. So these appear to be the thermite fingerprint. Let's take a look at what else Dr. Jones found in the slag from the end of this memorial at Clarkston University. He performs his x-ray fluorescence on this small piece of slag and finds once again iron, sulfur, potassium, manganese, calcium. Gel explosives are all a super thermite, tiny aluminum particles in iron oxide in this sol gel. They can be cast into shape. They're like a clay. Lawrence Livermore Lab did research on this, and this invention offers a thermite-based apparatus for cutting target materials. You pack the thermite in here, and you ignite it, and it comes out and is forced through melting the structural steel element in what in fractions of a second, uh, almost as effective as uh, high energy explosives, RDX and C4, which are more common in classic controlled demolitions. If sol gels were used, they would leave behind a very unique signature, 1,3-diphenylpropane. Uh, and in fact, EPA finds one molecule in their toxicological studies at levels that dwarfed all others, 1,3-diphenylpropane. Eric Schwartz says we've never observed it in any other sampling we've ever done. But is there evidence of thermite in the World Trade Center dust? Dr. Jones received no less than four separate samples of World Trade Center dust, some of it from an apartment across the street, Jeanette McKinley's apartment. And where the windows blew in and filled her apartment with a foot of this dust. Another sample was found uh, like 10 minutes later on the Brooklyn Bridge. Well, he takes